currently about 3 a.m. What is it, 3.45? We're on our way to the airport so we can get on a plane to Lima. Angie and James are doing something incredible um, that not many people have the opportunity to do or don't allow themselves the opportunity to do is I guess the better choice of words. We got into action, we had vision for it, we saw what we wanted and it just started happening. It's like the stars aligned. Woo! We did it honey! High five E's! So we got our whole storage unit second camera. Ooh, watch out for the bikes. Mattress. We sold a good deal of furniture. I mean, this is our entire life. Bye, Minnie. I love you forever. Mmm. Good mini. Good mini. Okay. We got Mozzie. She's looking sharp as usual. Mozzie's gonna miss us. Mozzie's like the feisty younger sister, you know? James. The night I met him, we met on a blind date. He actually told me he was moving to Australia. And that's when I knew I had a wanderluster on my hands. That's the crazy thing about Angie and James. If you know anything about them, it was never a risk. It was planned and taken care of. That's why I said when we're debt free, and I'm earning a consistent six-figure income with my business, with my AdvoCare business. I will go on a trip around the world before we have kids. Spark. Um, hardest part for Angie is going to be having to sit on her hands for a minute while soaking in what's going on for the moment and stop thinking about the future so much. Yeah. Yeah. And so I said yes because I knew traveling makes me very uncomfortable. I am a very habitual, routine-oriented, like, task planner. So being in this element of, I don't know what time zone it is, I don't know what, I, I don't know what I packed, um, I like we're like, it's winter time, but I didn't pack enough, and just like all this stuff that's out of my control, it's hard, but it's so good, it's so good. Um, well, Angie's dog is gonna be like, she doesn't know if she's gonna have white Wi-Fi, and I might be against the world. <laughs> split up when I was young and so as far back as I can remember even when I was like, three years old I remember flying by myself on the plane from California to, to Memphis um, you know to see my mom every Christmas and summer and so I just grew up being really comfortable on planes I loved you know talking to people strangers meeting people from all different kinds of places I just thought it was exciting Garner I don't know if it's going to be hard for him. I think he's like ready to just do this. I'm probably going to do that, but I don't know the breast of chicken, even though it doesn't sound very exciting. The bahian style coconut sauce with chorizo rice. You're going to have me at chorizo. You know, I've traveled with James, so I, I know that he can, like, you know, do the backpacking scene and he can do whatever he wants. But I also know that he would probably much rather be in the four star hotel. Um, in any case, I want to see what's up with this amenities kit. Um, what, did you check yours out? Drink all your champagne. Well, it goes down pretty easy. I mean, it's not like Dom or anything, but I'm just joking. I, this is actually my second. I got. Oh, really? That's tight. <laughs> you, man, you had an extra glass at the lounge too. So you got some. Um, you know you're a lightweight. Some tread on the socks. Dude, I love my socks already. Little eye mask, toothbrush, so I can be fresh tonight when I go to sleep. And a United branded pin. I mean, you know. This isn't like an Hermes robe or anything like I hear Cathay Pacific has, but it'll do. For the most part, I would say James is actually, at least from a guy perspective, he was great to travel with. I mean, there were some minor annoyances with, you know, spending like 15 minutes to like completely fold every shirt and put it in his backpack, but you know what? <laughs> 
it's, it's, it's very minor, and if that's how he wants to like pack his clothes, I, I can't really complain that much. Realize that all you will ever be in your life is what you experience and what you remember, your memories. And uh, Mr. Garner, he, he lives and breathes travel. He lives and breathes experience. And because of that, the, the forward thinking of Angie, the true presence of Mr. Garner, they're such a good team. Um, they'll bounce each other out very nicely as they always do in just about every situation. We want to be great stewards of, of opportunity. We want to be great stewards of responsibility. And that's how this trip fits into that, by sharing with the world that your dreams are possible. And then of course, you know, there is the aspect of like your legacy on, on people, on humanity, the people you meet, the kindness you show and the love you show to people. And you know, that same thing is reciprocated when you travel because the kindness and the love that people show to you uh, from the countries that you're in, knowing that you're a stranger, you're an alien in that country, and it makes you feel so welcome and you, and you have more faith in humanity. Um, it really is just the most amazing thing to see that we all have the same goal and that people are really good at their hearts. Last night, we got out of the Lima airport and we had to get a cab to our hotel and we're sitting there kind of like arguing with the cabbie about price and distance and stuff. And we're like, we're going to the Wyndham. And he goes, well, there's two Wyndhams, which Wyndham? And we look up and we're like actually standing in front of the Wyndham. I mean, it's literally across the street from the airport. I think it's pretty awesome. That means we don't have to take a $50 cab ride. So anyway, that makes our day a whole lot easier. Stay tuned for the next episode of The American Daydream as we head to Cusco to acclimate before our trek across Machu Picchu. We stay at the most fantastic hotel and James gets a little emotional at dinner. Make sure not to miss a beat by going to www.thegarnerupgrade.com. Ciao for now.